This is saying, right? You know somebody's upset with you? You go find them. Put on your big boy pennies and you go find them and deal with it. Imagine what would happen in the relationships in your life if you took that seriously. Imagine what would happen in the relationships in your life if you took radically serious the call to deal with issues between you and somebody else, no matter who started it. Scary. But imagine the unity and the life that would happen. Go and deal. Now, well, Brian, I hear that from the Word, but you know, I don't like controversy. I'm not, I do not like confrontation. I'm not a confrontational person. <coughs> Congratulations. Because there's a very small percentage of people in the world that do like confrontation, and most of them are in the hospital incarcerated. <laughs> and if they're not one of those two, they should be. Most of them, there's a few exceptions that have a healthy view of confrontation. But most of the people that look, dude, let's go confront somebody. I'm with you. Let's go. Have a screw. <laughs> all right. So we're all in the same boat. None of us like to have con conversation. But you know what happens when you deal with issues head on? You build intimacy. Amen. And as much as nobody wants to go deal with it, you know how uncomfortable it starts to be if you know people are talking about people. You ever been in that job or that church or that, that family or whatever where somebody comes up to you and says, Hey, Donnie. You know about Carrie? You can never believe this about Carrie. I tell you, this is I've been in that church. She did this. I believe it right here. You don't like country. We're not, we're not talking about We're talking about Carrie. We're just pure gospel here. <laughs> and, and that's all cool. You know, you got like, ooh, they're talking to me. Yeah, it's called triangulization. We get closer by talking about somebody else. It feels good to talk about somebody else. The problem is, is that you start feeling like if we're if they're talking to me about that person, are they talking to that person about me? Or I gotta make sure that I'm really good friends with this person so they don't talk to me about the other person. So now I gotta be friends about obligation. And suddenly you create an unhealthy place because everybody's worried that somebody else is talking about it. I'll tell you what, every time I see God trying to do something big in groups, Satan comes against it by attacking unity. Trying to create disunity. Trying to create people talking about people. <laughs> More than that, when you deal with the issue, you create trust and intimacy. You create a safe place to be. You create that relationship, those healthy relationships that we talked about last week. That's what God's calling us to. We're not just experiencing this massive, amazing adventure of life for ourselves. We're giving it to other people. We're sharing it with somebody else. We're bringing value to their life. You see, the sixth commandment, you'll not murder, has to do with so much more than just not taking out a gun and shooting somebody. It's talking about God's value on life. God is the source of life, unborrowed, underived. It comes from God, and He is passionate, not just that you live and breathe, but that you experience an amazing life. And when you find everything that you are in God, when God takes you on the adventure of your life, promise number two, when number three, because of that, the passion for His fame becomes your greatest priority. And then suddenly you realize, I get to live in rest. I don't have to work to be good enough anymore. Then suddenly you're living life and this commandment becomes a promise for you. Amen. And not only that, but you're passionate about other people experiencing the same thing you have. Experiencing the same life. When we were building the experience before we, before we launched, 
There's a guy who was a part of it uh, who moved away to Alaska and I think he's in Ohio, Ohio now. His name is Ralph. Occasionally he listens to it on podcast. Hi, Ralph, if you're listening. Uh, I used to call him Super Ralph because uh, he was an amazing worker. Great guy. But one time we were driving in his car, he looked at me and said, Brian, what's the most amazing thing that you've done in ministry? What's, what, what are you most proud of, most excited about? What, what's the greatest thing you've done? And I thought about it. I've done a lot of crazy stuff. About it. I said, you know what it really is? It's named off, I think I named off a couple of people. I said, it's the people that I've seen embrace life. I've <coughs> gone from their old life to a new life. That's the coolest thing ever. That's the most amazing thing ever. And that's what God is promising you. It's a promise. And if you're here and you're going, okay, Brian, that's great, but you know what, right now, what I keep hearing is that same thing I heard from the time I was in Sunday school or Sabbath school, and, and don't do this and don't murder. And now you're saying, Brian, but I got to embrace life and I got to give that life to other people and I got to deal with conflict. And that's pretty overwhelming because I don't feel that way and I don't really like people at all and I kind of wish they'd go away. And, and 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 I don't know about that so much. And now I feel like you're telling me that I'm going to be a good Christian or I'm going to be a good follower of God and I got more stuff I got to do. This, please hear me. This is a promise. This is a promise. This is not you going, okay, now I've got to make this happen. This is God saying, I am going to do this in your life. Amen. How does it happen? It happens when you look at your life right now and go, man, I want that kind of relationships. I want that in my life because I don't have it right now. When you recognize that I have a need, in frameworks we call, we call, we call it desperation this last week. How desperate are you? I'm desperate for something more. When you come to that place of saying, I'm desperate, God, and then you say, okay, God, you're the only one that has the answer, so please come in and do this in my life. That's what happened to the people in Egypt. They cried out to God saying, God, save us. And God came down and he did it. Amen. They couldn't get themselves free. and You can't make yourself like people. You can't make yourself even like your own life. He says, I'm going to do this in you. And so if you're in that place right now, your desperation that you feel is great. Don't look at yourself going, I've got to make this happen. Look at God and say, God, you promised this, and I need it in my 